Hey, Bruce Leader, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is all about the Podgo, and I'm gonna give you five tips on how to make your Podgo sound huge, and I want this to be just quick. You gotta be ready by Sunday, so here is exactly what I would tell you, but first, let me just say, this video is sponsored by myself, the Expanse Pack. If you don't know what that is, you purchase once, you get free updates for life. I keep putting new content, new presets in there. The preset we make today, is actually not gonna be in there. I'm just gonna build a preset from scratch. Maybe I'll put it in there one day. But if you look here, you can see all the presets that are already in there. There's a lot of stuff in there. Yeah, I just keep putting stuff in there. And the latest one was the jailbreak preset where I just showed you how you can like remove some of the fixed blocks and yeah, it's been really good. But that's not what we're gonna do today. I'm just gonna show you my five tips on a regular preset on how to make your pod go sound huge. Let's dig in. All right, got my guitar. We're just going to get a brand new preset and build one from scratch. Here we go. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is pick out our amp. And there's an amp I haven't really messed with in a while. It is the Princess amp based off of the Princeton, Fender Princeton. I wanna bring the drive up a good bit. We'll bring the bass up, the treble up and the presence up a good bit. I'm gonna use my sag hum ripple trick. I made a video about how to use those and how to dial them in. I like this sound right here. If it's a little loud, which it kinda of is, we don't want, we want to avoid clipping. I like to bring the channel volume down. That sounds pretty good. Now let's go to our cab. And here we will pick our mic. I like using the 121 ribbon and moving the distance really close, which darkens it up a little bit, but it keeps it from being too brittle. But we're here to our first tip in the cab block to make our pod go sound huge. And that is to bring up our early reflections. Now you can bring this up all the way and have an extreme sound, or you can just dial it into taste. But basically what this does, it also saves on DSP is that it kind of gives us a space. Early reflections are the, the sounds bouncing off the wall in the room where the cab is being mic'd up. And so it's very subtle, but it can help us get make some space. It can actually be like a faux or mock room reverb. So here it is all the way up. That's all the way up, all the way off. And so I like doing about 83 because I think it sounds good there and uh, that's the year I was born. All right, that was tip number one. Now tip number two, what we're going to do is something that I usually do on the Helix and the HX Stomp where I take a delay and I bring it down to the second path. Uh, and I do like a little millisecond trick where we're trying to spread our sound. Well, here there's only one path, but I learned a trick from Justin Chan over about all about worship guitar, and you can do it on the pod go as well. We are going to use the dual delay. So click delay, click dual delay, and here are the settings. We want to take the left time all the way down, take the right time down anywhere between 10 and 20 milliseconds. I like to do 19 because it's weird. We want the feedback on both of these to be all the way off, and we want the mix on both of these to be all the way on. So basically we're just creating a, a channel and we're setting one back by 19 milliseconds and it's gonna create some really awesome width. The level's fine. We wanna make sure we turn this modulation on because we don't want any effect. Um, we just want uh, the delay. So here it is off again. Here it is on. Did you hear that? That's amazing. That's probably my favorite trick to make the pod go sound huge. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is pick another delay. This is for an actual delay sound. Let's use the transistor tape. Um, I like setting this to a quarter. So what we're gonna do is we're going to use our delay, one delay, to act like a dual delay, to get multiple sounds, to thicken up our tone, to make it sound huge, because that's what we're doing. So if you set your note sync to quarter, and you wanna make kind of like a, a faux dual delay, we need to come down here to scale and set it at 75%. What this is going to do is give us 75% of a quarter, which is dotted eighth. Um, the next thing I wanna do is just kind of turn the feedback up for more ambient sounds. I love some wow and flutter. I think the modulation on the trails of the delay help it not be so sterile and it, it makes it sound huge in my opinion and huge is what we're going for. Um, let's crank the headroom all the way up because we, we want to avoid any clipping and the mix can, uh, well, we'll just leave it about where it was at. I think it was at 40. Spread all the way up. That gets us the biggest, widest sound. So here it is without. <laughs> Now the tail is going on a while, that's because the feedback is up. So we can bring the feedback 
back down um, to clean that up a bit. One of the things I like doing is cranking the feedback back up a little bit and bringing the mix down, especially for rhythm sounds where I just want the delay to fill up space to make my tone sound huge if it's not a specific part. I usually try to go for, that's still way too long, I usually try to go for about four repeats before it kind of trails off. I think that sounds pretty good. In the headphones, I've noticed that things sound more prominent, but when you get to a live play, some of these uh, little intricacies of reverbs and delays will kind of disappear. And so when I play live, I like to boost these parameters, make them a little bit too much in my ears, my headphones at home, so that when I get to where I'm playing live, it actually just sounds nice and full. So I might would bump that up to like 34. Okay, the next thing, and this is really cool, I love doing this, is that we're going to come here to the front of the chain, get a pitch block, a single pitch, move it up an octave, which would be 12, and um, maybe bring the mix down to taste. I'm gonna say like around 34. And we can click this on and off to help with lead lines. This will really help our lead lines stick out in the mix. So this is what we have so far with the pitch. And up real high, sometimes you can't tell that it's a pitch. Um, you just hear it stick out. Now you can hear it more when you hit low notes. If we bring in the mix a little more, make it more and more drastic. And you can bring that in as much as you want. If you want that to be a little more drastic, we bring the mix right up. So the next thing I like to do is something with this EQ block. Now we have to use this, unless you're using my jailbreak preset from the Expanse Pack, um, where you can get rid of some of these things, we have to use this block anyway. So, so instead of using it as an EQ, I like to use it as a boost. And so what I do here is I go down, get a 10 band graphic EQ, and I like to, you know, boost the level to around five. We're really gonna, we're set in front of the amp so it pushes the amp. Go down here to 500, add one, 1,000, add two, and 2,003. Then we have a boost. So let me turn some delays off. This is our clean tone. So we can actually shape and make our own like tube screamer boost, we added mids. It's like a, a mid punch to our Fender amp, which just sounds awesome. If you wanna get more drastic, you just mess with these parameters and you can get and shape your own boost. It's kinda, kinda cool. So right now, if I use my pickup selector, I have something very clean. That's a lot of dynamic, I love it. So the next thing we wanna do is add a reverb. I mean, there's nothing that makes your tone sound bigger than adding reverb. So I'm gonna move all this stuff, except I just did that wrong, let me. I'm gonna move this block all the way to the end. I like my reverb at the end, and I love the glitz reverb. So what I like to do is bring the decay up a good amount. Think high decay, lower mix for big ambient sounds. Now, um, a lot more mix will we'll make it more ambient, but it might also get a little muddy. Another thing we can do to help keep our tone from getting muddy but sound huge is bring up the pre-delay a good bit of, a good a bit amount a good bit so decay somewhere in here pre-delay somewhere in here i'm going to leave the cuts alone and maybe bring up the mix from where they have it to somewhere maybe like 28 everything else um, just like with our delay i love a good bit of modulation i'm going to make sure our trails are on so that if we cut this off it'll keep trailing um, and i like the depth pulled up a bit so yeah let's see what it sounds like without it so it's a good amount of reverb and if it's too much you can bring the mix back but like I said when you play live a lot of times this reverb will just it won't even seem like it's there so don't be afraid to use it uh, this is like with the delay and reverb together <laughs> Thank you.
That sounds huge. Let's hear our dry tone again. This is with none of the effects. I mean, it's the same amp, same amp. And then we add our boost and the, the pitch for a lead line. This sound is perfect for just like big chords. A lot of times I play rhythm and I don't play a lot of lead. Um, I just like big chords. I don't like strumming a lot because you don't want to strum your electric like an acoustic. So this is perfect for those big chords. Take the boost off and it cleans right up. All right, bonus tip. We made it through the five points, but here's a bonus tip. And this is not really a tone tip, but it's a programming tip. What I like to do is set up all this stuff on snapshots. I like to use a snapshot per song a lot of times. So what I'll do is I'll come into my delay and um, let's see, I'll right click here and make that controllable via snapshots. Same with feedback, snapshots. Well, on Flutter, I like to keep that the same. My scale, I'll definitely do that to snapshots and mix. That's important because each song, you might want to dial it in, or each part of a song even. If you're using a preset per song, you might want to dial these into taste because a different part of the song might need something drastically different. I also like to go to my reverb and do the same thing with decay and mix. Obviously you can do any of these other things, but those are the most important things. And then even like with my EQ, I might want, um, I might want to boost it even more. I might want to take my level and say per snapshot, I might want that to be even more of a boost. You can also crank the drive on your amp and stuff like that, but uh, I like to use my amp like I would in real life a lot of times. I mean, I do I do crank the drive sometimes, but I'm never back there turning the drive on a real amp when it's back in a room or on stage with me. So I like to set my amp like I like it and then have my effects all support that. Well, I hope that was helpful for you all. If it was, let me know down in the comments. Also like and subscribe. We're very close to 10,000 subscribers and I wanna celebrate, but I can't celebrate yet because we're not there yet. So share this content with anybody that you think it would also help them. Remember the Expanse Pack, a big collection of presets. If you wanna know what's in there, you can go heyworshipleader.com slash store and read more. I never know if it's store or shop. Anyways, I have expanse packs for not only the PodGo, but all the Helix products. You can go check those out. I also have some other products like a digital worship planner. If you're a worship leader and you want to uh, get organized and be creative, it's, I've designed it. It works on an iPad. It's great. And I also have worship pads that I use in Ableton every week. So if you're interested in any of that stuff and want to support the channel, check it out. Also, I have affiliate links all linked down below. I have a page to all the gear that I use for all my pedal boards and, and everything. So you can go check that out. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for hanging out with me. Thank you for commenting down below. I love this community of people that gather around worship ministry, worship tone specifically. So love you guys. See you in the next video. Bye.